deposed Catalan Vice President Oriol Junqueras has asked to be transferred to a Catalan prison. At the moment, he's in a Madrid jail, 700 kilometers away from his family. Hello and welcome to Catalan News. Junqueras argues that being held so far from his relatives can negatively affect not only him, but also his children and his defense. He's been behind bars for almost six months, and in fact today marks half a year since the declaration of independence and the sacking of the Catalan government. With direct rule from Madrid still in force, in our show today we'll have a look at the effects of this very atypical situation in the country throughout this period. We'll also speak to a lawyer to go more in depth in the Manada case, judicial verdict, which has sparked outrage for many people. The Catalan leaders in jail have been asking for months to be released, or at least to be transferred to Catalan jails in order to avoid that their families have to travel for 12 to 14 hours for a 40 minute visit. The Catalan deposed Vice President Oriol Junqueras is trying to convince the Spanish authorities once more. He claims that he and his children are already suffering negative effects from the distance, both physically and emotionally. He also said that his right to defence is being violated as lawyers also need to travel a big distance to meet him. His move comes after a similar request by Jordi Couchard in a joint effort by most jailed leaders. Junqueras was jailed only six days after the declaration of independence and the removal of the Catalan government soon afterwards. Today marks six months from that day, and although a Catalan election was held in December, the country has no government yet. This lack of self-government in Catalonia, something unseen in the past four decades, has had its effects in many spheres of the public life. Between this moment, the declaration of independence in the Catalan parliament, and this one, the Spanish Senate voting for unprecedented measures against Catalonia self-rule, there was only a 45-minute gap. It was back on October the 27th, 2017, one of the days when tensions were at a peak in the country. Today marks exactly six months since that day, and those measures passed by the Senate and imposed by Mariano Rajoy's government are still in place. The most iconic was the removal of the whole Puigdemont cabinet on that same day of October the 27th. All Catalan government offices abroad but the one in Brussels were also closed, along with the Catalan Public Diplomacy Council. According to one association of public servants, over 250 officials have been fired since then. One of the last was the Director General of Foreign Affairs for letting a deposed minister set foot in the Brussels office to attend the cultural event. Another controversial result of the application of Article 155 of the Spanish Constitution was the removal of some works of art in the city of Lleida, after a long-lasting conflict between Catalonia and Aragon, when a judge ordered the artworks to be moved from Lleida to Sushena in Aragon last November, the Catalan administration already under Madrid rule had to give up the fight. Other effects of this situation include freezes on funding for some research projects, while policies for the LGBTI and underage sectors have been put on hold. The Catalan government had also started unearthing some mass graves from the Spanish Civil War, but this too has been stopped. The Spanish government pledged that once a new government is formed, Article 155 will be lifted. But the Catalan party still haven't found the way to do that. Yesterday we told you about the verdict of the Manada case. Judges in the Navarra region, some 300 kilometers west of Catalonia, decided that a group of five men who sexually attacked an 18-year-old girl were only guilty of sexual abuse and not rape because the women did not fight back during the attack. This ruling, which has led to a much lower prison sentence for the gang rape, has sparked outrage in Spain as a whole, with demonstrations called in many places, such as Barcelona. Plaza San Jaume was filled with people who loudly protested with pots and pans and chanting things like, say what they may, it is not abuse. The Catalan capital city council rejected the verdict and supported the victim in a joint statement read this morning by the city's mayor, Ado Colau. Insta el Congrés dels Diputats i el Senat a la modificació del Codi Penal per revisar el supòsit d'abús sexual, així com la consideració jurídica de la violència en casos d'agressió sexual i violació. In order to go more in depth with this topic, we can speak now with Carla Bay. She's a lawyer specialized in criminal law, violence and human rights, among other things. She's also a member of Dona Juristas, Catalan for Women Lawyers, and has been a very vocal critic of the final decision on the Manada case. Hi, Ms. Bay. Hello. What's the difference between rape and sexual assault and how was it applied in this case? The main uh, difference for the criminal code in Spain is that uh, 
rape uh, has to be with force or uh, intimidation. And in this case, it was only a suffocating uh, intercourse. What is it that concerns you most about this judicial sentence and La Manada case as a whole? I think that is problematic because it sends an important message to um, victims that it's like uh, not having justice anymore, but also for rapists that they could think that uh, there is no possibility to be condemned by rape, but only about abuse. The prosecutor will challenge the decision to press for a rape conviction. The Spanish government said it will reform the criminal code. In your opinion, what needs to be done in order to prevent this from happening again? I think that, first of all, we have to improve our criminal code. So we have to know more about gender issues. But also we have to give more formation from judges and also to courts to know better that uh, rape is not only when, when there is violence, but also in other many situations. So in case that there are not so many proofs, uh, it's really difficult. But the problem is that in a clear case like that, uh, a judge thinks that there is no rape, that is a consented uh, sexual intercourse. What about Europe? How do neighbouring countries deal with similar cases of rape and sexual assault? I think that we have two good examples, like Italy and Andorra, that they don't have any difference about uh, abuse, sexual abuse and uh, rape. So this is a good way to resolve these um, sexual issues uh, in the criminal code. I think that it's impossible to have uh, any non-consented sexual intercourse uh, without force or intimidation. Thank you for being with us, Ms. Bai. Thanks. Moving on to economy, the airport of Reus in southern Catalonia has new international routes coming soon. The infrastructure will offer a weekly flight to Brussels from next month until September. Two more services to Tain, the Estonian capital, and Aberdeen in Scotland will also start in May and will last until the end of October. These new operations are joining other recent new routes to London in the UK and Shannon in Ireland. Reus hosted just over a million passengers last year and it's the third biggest airport in Catalonia after Barcelona and Girona. Protests in Venezuela, the battle for Mosul in Iraq, the attack on Westminster Bridge in London, the Rohingya crisis, the actions by Boko Haram in Nigeria. These are only some of the events that shaped the world last year and now striking images of all of them have been put together in an exhibition not to be taken lightly, but definitely one worth a visit for anyone who takes an interest in current affairs throughout the world. It's the World Press Photo and it runs until May 27th at the CCCB in Barcelona. World Press Photo has returned to Barcelona and once again global conflicts are the exhibition's main protagonists. Some of the images are not for the faint-hearted, as the darker side of human nature is captured through the lens of some of the world's best photographers. This year's winner of the World Press Photo was Venezuelan Ronaldo Shamit. He spent two months covering the massive and occasionally violent protests in his own country against President Nicolas Maduro for the Agence France Press. Covering events such as this, the photographer believes, carries its own burden. Es una gran, gran, gran responsabilidad, porque es una foto sobre todo que, que genera mucho, mucha polémica. Entonces es bueno que en el momento que sucede, tú digas qué fue lo que pasó, con la máxima claridad, seriedad posible, que no haya ambigüedad, que no permitamos que la gente piense otra cosa. The exhibition paints a nickel picture of the general state of world affairs, although there are some intimate portraits of family life, war and violence are the dominating themes. Ongoing refugee crisis also featured in this year's edition as thousands of people have been forced to flee their homes in various places throughout the world, whether it be from war, poverty or persecution. Como siempre tenim temes d'actualitat, temes de conflicte, malauradament masses conflictes al món i visions no sempre fàcils de digerir. In the 61st edition of the award, just over 73,000 images have been submitted by photographers from around the globe, some of them 
more harrowing than others. The truth is brutal after all, and at the annual exhibition there are no holds barred. In some places, more than others, death is a part of everyday life. And the innocent are usually the victims, those who end up paying the highest price. We're moving on now to another exhibition, a bit lighter in this case. It's yet another exhibition on one of the best-known Catalan artists, Salvador Dali. A new display will be inaugurated tomorrow in Figueres, his birthplace in northern Catalonia. It will unveil some unprecedented letters, photographs, drawings and oil paintings by the surrealist painter. Visitors will be able to find out more about the relationship between Dali and his family, and especially the influence his father and sister had on his work. It will be on for free until November 4th. Daniel Brühl, does this name ring a bell? He's one of Catalonia's most internationally acclaimed actors. You may have seen him in Inglorious Bastards, Goodbye Lenin or Captain America. His most recent work is now in cinemas, Seven Days in Entebbe by the Brazilian filmmaker José Padilla. It's inspired by the real hijacking of a flight en route from Tel Aviv to Paris in the 70s and one of the most daring rescue missions ever attempted. Take a look at the trailer, enjoy and see you next week. Bienvenidos a Entebbe, Uganda. Pedimos a los movimientos revolucionarios que dirijan la atención del mundo entero hacia la lucha del pueblo palestino. Hay 239 pasajeros, 83 israelíes. Alemanes secuestrando un avión lleno de israelíes. ¿Sabe la impresión que causa al mundo? Ya lo sé, pero esa no es la realidad. No queremos hacerles daño. Somos humanitarios. Averiguad si Idi Amin los está ayudando. No podemos negociar con terroristas. Sería un suicidio político. Si su gobierno no accede a negociar, mataremos a dos niños cada 24 horas. 